Hey everyone, it's Erin Melton again. Hope you're doing well. Really excited about the guest that we have today with us, Chuck Fazio. Hey Chuck. Hi, how are you? Good, good. Thank you so much for being here. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into real estate. Wow, that's that's like a loaded question there. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I was uh, born and raised in New York. Um, moved out to Arizona the uh, end of 98 and went to get my real estate license. So uh, I ran nightclubs for a living and I just wanted a change of life. And I thought real estate was it. And uh, that's what I did, jumped in to real estate and uh, didn't realize how difficult it would be. <laughs> hey, again, let's make some easy money. Let's go into real yeah. estate, right? Yeah. Oh, real easy money. Chuck, what would you say is your why? My why? Um, why? Very simple. And, you know, before I tell you my why, I'd like to tell the audience that if you don't have a why that you measure everything up against, mm -hmm. um, you have a tough time going through life because I agree. all your decisions need to be based off of your why. So my why is actually to change agents' lives and to glorify God through everything I do. That's my why. That's what I measure everything up against. And as long as that's in line, no matter what's going on, that's if it a, aligns with that that why, then it's worth yeah. it, right? And, uh, you know, it's one of the reasons why we closed down our large brokerage. It was, it was because our why wasn't being aligned, although we were successful. You, okay. you, you can't say you have a why in life but then let other things get in the way of it. And that's not really your why. So and, uh, it, making tough decisions uh, based off your why sometimes happens. I agree. That really does happen for sure. So that kind of plays into a little bit about the next question I'm going to be talking to you that I think it probably will be the same for you. Talk to everyone about building the right culture. Well, um, you know, for many years in, in running our brokerage and running our team first and then running the brokerage, um, we quickly realized that who you surround yourself with matters. Okay. And, and it's kind of amazing how um, we as adults could preach to our kids on who they should be surrounding themselves with. But yet as adults, we, we kind of think that philosophy doesn't apply to us. Mm -hmm. um, so... One of the things that we stick to um, is Proverbs twenty-seven seventeen: as iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. And our inner circle is, is really tight-knit. Um, me and Angela are very protective of who we surround ourselves with mm -hmm. because toxicity has a way of creeping in. Yes, it and, does. And affecting you in, in all points of your life. So, so it is, it, it's, it's almost critical to your success and your level of success and, and really happiness in life mm -hmm. um, by choosing the right people to be around. And uh, we're always talking about that. And it is really a big deal. It is. I could not, could not agree more. Could not agree more. What would your adolescent self not recognize about Chuck today? Everything. <laughs> really? Like what? Well, um, you know, I, I, quite a few viewers know my background and, uh, I'm, I'm open about my background that, you know, I, uh, I was a drug addict. I was a, uh, degenerate, um, ran clubs for the mob and, uh, you, you know, I just wasn't a good person. And, um, you know, when God got a hold of me, it just radically transformed me. So when I do say there's probably nothing my adolescent self recognizes in me now um, is, is really a, a, a true statement. Now, you know, people say, do I regret my past? Well, I don't regret it. I'm not proud of it. Right. But if, if I believe God's always in control um, and I regret it, then I would say he wasn't in control. So it molded me to who I am, but I'm, um, I'm radically a different person than when I was younger. Got it. Got it. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And I think that's important for everyone to understand that you never have to feel like no matter where you come from, there's always a place to start. Yeah, absolutely. Always a place to start. For yep. sure. 
It's a For journey sure. and it's a process. Absolutely. Absolutely. So talk to us a little bit about being a part of EXP and the Honey Badger Nation. How does that make you feel? Well, it's, um, you know, we, we, um, we ran one of the largest single office brokerages in the country. Mm -hmm. And to, for us to close it down and move to EXP Realty, you know, like I said, it had to number one align with our why. Right. And, and our why was to change agents' lives. Okay. Now, you know, in my career, I've overseen over 40,000 homes sold and 9 billion in production and coached and mentored hundreds of agents. But we got to a point of, I wasn't really changing their life. And so what EXP afforded us to do was to literally come alongside agents and change their lives. Mm -hmm. So the EXP model, coupled with the Honey Badgers, you know, with, with Jay Kinder and Michael Reese, um, was really a big deal because it was, you know, not only EXP Realty, but who you're aligning yourself with in there. And that was very important to us. So for me to make this the massive move that we made, um, those those two things, mm -hmm. EXP and the group I'm in, had to really align yes. with changing lives. And that's what mm -hmm. we're doing. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that is, I think it's amazing to hear like on a large, on such a large scale, when we made the move over, um, it was a scary, scary decision. But in comparison, it was three people, not thousands of people, you know? Um, hats off to you. And I think that that really just speaks volumes to anyone watching that if you can do it, anyone else can do it. Now, mm -hmm. I am curious, when you did that, how did you go about doing that with your, with your team? Like, how was it explained? Or was it like everyone was on board? It was kind of like, we're doing this. Trust so, me on this. So, yeah, that's a good question, Erin. And, you know, th there, was, there was no blueprint oh, yeah. or roadmap mm -hmm. that was going to help us. So we're, me and Angela, we're, we're trendsetters, we're visionary mm -hmm. people. And it was six months in negotiation it really wasn't negotiation. It was six months of really um, deep prayer, uh, trying to figure out, is this the move we want to do? Okay. So our staff, so so we had about 906 agents and about maybe 20-something people on staff. And our staff was like our family. So they were the first to know about the, the, even the thought process. Sure. Because I, I wanted their opinions. Mm -hmm. I wanted their, their buy-in because we, we are like a family. So okay. that started the process. Got it. Um, after six months, at the end of six months, we it was almost a hard no. We weren't going to do it. Got it. And we wound up flying out to Vegas to meet uh, Sam Rodriguez and Chris Bear. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to crunch numbers. And, and the thing was, is because of the brokerage of our size, um, you know, not a lot of people know the dynamics that go into building and operating something like that. Right. And the numbers weren't working. So the, the one thing that, you know, I could tell you, Aaron, and anybody listening out there, if, if, you're, a, if you're a big team or a brokerage, you, you cannot look at this as a lateral initial move, the numbers aren't, I shouldn't say aren't, the numbers probably won't work if you mm -hmm. go apples for apples. Okay. And we were doing that because remember, there's no blueprint. Right. And, and at the time, EXP still didn't really have that great of a reputation. So, so I said, the numbers don't work. And that's when it really hit me when we were sitting down with them like, it's not making the numbers work based on if every one of my agents moved over. Sure. It's the opportunity that it could afford us to grow to. Right. So if so the answer really needs to be is that I believe in the opportunity, not the mm -hmm. lateral move. And that was the linchpin of going, 
of us changing our mind going, okay, we can't lose sight of the opportunity and the growth. Of course. So now to really answer your question, how did we move? Because once we decided and our staff was on board, that the next big issue we have to do is how do we maintain or retain most of our agents? Sure. Sure. Um, because, you know, we have an overhead and bills to pay. So, so we were like, there's no way, number one, we could go rent out a place and bring 900 agents because they'll all know something's up. Right. And before that even happens, negativity will start to rise. Mm -hmm. um, in our building, because we have probably one of the largest brokerages, physical spaces um, of 21,000 square feet. So in our facility, we, we have a, a conference, a training center right. that can hold about 200 agents. So we're like, well, you can't do it there because it's only 200 agents. Sure. So, so Matt, like I said, there was no blueprint. So what we did was we said, let's, let's invite groups of our 10 uh, top producers at a time to our mm -hmm. house for dinner. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, slowly talk about it, hoping that none of them would say anything. Right. And the, the, the second group, that went in. So we only went through 10. The Got second it. group went in. One of the guys who I really trusted and I was shocked. Soon as he left my house, he calls Keller Williams up, calls another local brokerage. And it was like hell broke loose. My agents were blowing up our phone because every recruiter out there was pouncing on my agents. Mm -hmm. And they're going, is this true? Is this happening? And so they got fed the lies. You know, I always say you, you don't go to a Chevy dealership and ask them about a Ford. Right. And they're sitting there going, they're asking the Keller Williams and the HomeSmart and the Remaxes. Well, what do you think about this move Chuck's doing to go to EXP? Sure. What do you think they're all saying? It's a scam. Right. He's selling you out. I mean, it was every negative thing in the book. And we lost uh 600 agents so only retained 300 wow and the industry looked at it as a catastrophic fail but remember i was at peace with it mm -hmm. because i knew we were moving backwards at, for some level mm -hmm. i just didn't know how much we'd move backwards but I made the move for the bigger opportunity. Sure. And I believed in myself and, and, and my wife. And um, now we look back, uh, we got almost 4,500 agents um, in our group and uh, wouldn't have done that staying at Revelation. That makes sense. Yeah. That, that's, that's amazing. So obviously you've had a lot of success up to this point, right? What's important to you at this stage in your career, Chuck? Um, you, you know, it's, it's not only just the, the stage I'm at in my career, it's the stage I'm at in my life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what I'm looking for, for peace, peace of mind, freedom. My mm -hmm. wife's my best friend and my partner. Um, I love, we spend, we spend every day together. We go on dates every night and to me to live my life with my beautiful bride and you know with our kids and our grandkids and to literally change people's lives i mean mm -hmm. what what drives me is that this vehicle of exp and the industry doesn't really understand it that it, it's the only opportunity if you're in the real estate industry to literally change your life right Look, you, you could, any agent could sell real estate at any point. Of course. Point. Mm -hmm. You could make a few hundred thousand dollars. Right. But that's not life-changing money. Mm -hmm. And and I don't chase money. I, I chase what the money affords me to do. So okay. at this point in my life, um, I, I, I want to get rid of the noise. Mm -hmm. And I want to change people's lives. I, I love when, I mean, we have agents come up to us crying saying, thank you for being the leaders right. that you are because we would have never moved if you didn't make us move. Sure. And we're changing their life. And that's 
that's powerful. And then, like I said, my why is, look, it's not me. It's the Lord. I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, thank you again, Chuck, so much for coming and speaking with us today. And I do want to say that I leave one thing that when we just first came over to EXP and I got to watch one of the um, Honey Badgers live presentations and you and Angela were on there. And I have to admit that you were one of the first people that I listened to and I truly like connected and was like, okay, I, I think we did a good thing. And it was just you guys talking about what you did with your clients and how you remained in touch with them and the scratchers in the cards. <laughs> and I'll have to, when we get off camera, I'll tell you a little bit more how that, that has really made such a, an impact on my life and how I have always done things that it took things to the next level of what I never even imagined. So thank you so much for that amazing tidbit. It's made a big difference. Well, it's a blessing to be partners with you and your husband. And this, this is, you know, I said, I wouldn't get to meet people like you if I didn't take the leap of faith. There you go. Well, thanks again, Chuck. You have a great day. And I hope that everyone has gotten a lot out of this. I know I have. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank much. you so much.